Hey, Zuko here. So you just graduated college, you're in your childhood bedroom, Avatar The Last Airbender on repeat, and you're not really sure what you should be doing. Well, here are some options. For those that don't know, I actually just graduated from UC San Diego with a degree in mathematics and computer science. I make computer science, tech, and college advice videos here on YouTube, so if you are interested in any of those topics, consider subscribing down below and liking this video for the YouTube algorithm to help you boy out. As always, you can find the resources I use down in the description below, as well as timestamps in case you wanna skip around. I go over some statistics later in the video if you wanna either skip to that or watch to that point. So let's start with before you graduate and ideally during your senior year. There are a lot of deadlines before you actually graduate during your senior year that you should sort of keep in your mind. So one of the first options that many people take is to lock down a job before they graduate. Ideally, you'll want to start looking as early as possible. So maybe you're coming off an internship from this summer, or maybe you were just working on some projects or something like that. You'll probably want to start looking pretty soon when you, depending on when you see this video, but in August or, you know, end of July, end of August, early September, around that period is when you're going to want to start looking to secure a job post-graduation. So for me, I know last year in 2019, I started looking for full-time positions around, I would say mid to late August. And I was actually fortunate enough to receive an offer at the end of October in 2019 for when I graduated in June, 2020. If you are fortunate enough to lock down a job you will get the ultimate sense of senioritis but it's nice you just gotta like not fail just don't fail just do what you've been doing so you don't mess it up and honestly in today's world from my experience employee referrals for companies that you want to work for are the best option for getting the highest possible response rate on your application versus just simply applying online. So if you haven't set up your LinkedIn, that is definitely a priority to do. Make sure to fill out all your experiences, all your projects, languages, significant classes you've taken, start connecting with people just as a little push for you to be able to connect with other people and even for recruiters to reach out to you. So I know the uh, current world situations are a very, uh, treacherous time but you know it's always good to try to keep a positive mindset and keep keep swinging at different opportunities so the way you would maybe go about getting employee referrals if you want me to make another video specifically about this comment that down below but maybe you could reach out to people similar connections you have on linkedin maybe consider if you know people who graduated prior to you that work at a company you'd be interested in working at maybe reach out to them, see what positions are open, maybe if some family, see if they know of anyone who's looking to hire, and you know, try to work around your, uh, your network. Additionally, a good way of looking for a job or when you're going to graduate is attending your career fairs, whether that's in person or if they have them online at your university. Now, I don't think career fairs are as fruitful as an employee referral at your dream company, but they still do a very good job getting you that face-to-face -face interaction. And I've actually talked to recruiters at career fairs at UC San Diego, and some of them have even said that they prioritize their in-person resumes, their you know career fair resumes over their online applications, just because they're able to put a face to the the resume whenever your university hosts career fairs whether that's online or in person still try to attend them and uh, hand out your resume to places you'd probably want to work for after you graduate honestly the game of you know postgraduate employment is honestly networking and volume i know it's pretty cliche to say but if you gotta reach out to your third cousin to see if his engineering firm is hiring someone or reach out to a, a club member you know that work at a big tech company to see if they're hiring. It's always good to do that. And in addition to all the networking and reaching out, you should also just continue to apply online. I know that I mentioned that applications online have a pretty low response rate in general, but it's always good to just keep applying online because you never know, something may hit at some point. But also during your senior year, some people may also just think to themselves and be like, you know what, I want more school and choose to go to graduate school. And for some majors and professions, going to graduate school is a must. So if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, you kind of need to go to graduate school. So keeping in mind the application deadlines of the postgraduate schools you want to go to, 
is a big must during your senior year so you don't miss the application deadline if you are looking to go to graduate school immediately after finishing your undergrad. Consider of the that was a weird sentence. In addition to keeping in your head the application deadlines for the universities that you want to go to for a master's or a doctorate, you'll also want to consider when the deadlines for taking the various exams are. So whether that's the, the GMAT, the MCAT, the LSAT, whatever the exam may be, you're going to want to know when you should take the exam so that you know when you have to apply to the universities and use those results. Alternatively, even if your desired profession doesn't necessarily require a postgraduate degree or anything like that, many people still opt for a master's degree or even a doctorate. And this can be done for a variety of reasons, such as, you know, personal interests, higher earning potential, research opportunities, anything like that. So since I know a little bit about computer science, specifically, for computer science, you might opt to get a master's degree in computer science or even a doctorate in a computer science related field like computer vision or artificial intelligence. And what this will do will not only increase your earning potential as you have greater qualifications and employers can be more confident in your ability as you've had more time to study the subject material is that you'll often be able to satisfy further job requirements. When I've been looking for jobs, I've even seen, you know, certain job requirements that actually require doctorate degrees or, you know, being a doctoral student. So if you're looking to get a master's or a doctorate, you'll be able to satisfy, say, if Google is looking for an AI researcher, uh, and often those positions will require some sort of postgraduate study in the in their specified field. You should also keep in mind that more school means more money that you have to pay the school. So depending on your financial situation, that's definitely something to consider. So looking for jobs and considering postgraduate study are two very, very popular options of what people typically look for during their their final year at university. And this can sort of house a lot of the other opportunities, such as if you want to go into more research oriented roles, you know, maybe you want to become self-employed even. Everything I've mentioned so far has been during your senior year, and it's generally better to start early rather than later, whether that's looking at when certain applications are due, looking at potential employers towards the beginning of your senior year, or figuring out if you want to be self-employed, how that would sort of work. But let's say you didn't really have a plan for post-graduation and you just graduated. No worries, it's not the end of the world, but it's probably a good idea to start defining a path that you want to start walking down. I think this is a really cliche thing to say. Really, really good idea is to make a pros and cons list for each of the opportunities you may be considering. This could work for even things you're not considering. So maybe you're like, nah, I don't want to go to graduate school. Maybe even just write out a pros and cons list to figure out why you wouldn't want to. And maybe that'll give you a sort of benefit further uh, direction toward which path you want to go down. This will obviously vary for everyone. But let's say your options are looking for a job, going to postgraduate school, and becoming self employed. Some pros for looking for a job would be, you know, obviously getting a job or, you know, networking with more people, discovering new opportunities, things like that. Whereas cons could be, you know, rejection, which is always a possibility, uh, being in a job you dislike lower compensation than you expected. These are these are things you should definitely consider when looking at your opportunities. Some pros for graduate school could be, you know, further research into interested fields, higher earning potential, research opportunities, whereas some cons could be, you know, a financial indebtedness if you're going to be getting into more student debt, the opportunity cost of not working. Writing pros and cons lists for things I found to be really beneficial when I truly was really, really indecisive. So I think if you're really unsure, if you just graduated of what to do, I think you should just take some time, sit down and figure out what are the possible options of you doing. So whether that's looking for a job, going to a postgraduate study, becoming self-employed, becoming a YouTuber, becoming a Twitch streamer, whatever it uh, whatever it may be, whatever you are thinking that you might want to do, writing a pros and cons list for each and then sort of taking action to sort of pursue those opportunities. And since this video is sort of a more broad topic about you know, what you should do or what things to consider after you graduate. Comment down below if you'd like a more specific video on what you should look for, either if it's going to 
uh, a graduate school or if it's looking for jobs you are interested in me diving a little bit more into those topics comment that down below now let's hop into some statistics now some of these are a little bit old but you know i think it's beneficial to still look at using this article from 2018 we can see some common paths taken for students after graduating from university and first of these links is to a harvard business review article from 2016 that essentially distinguishes between three types of postgraduate archetypes sprinters who immediately hop into a career wanderers who start their career about halfway through their 20s, and stragglers who take a majority of their 20s trying to start. This study surveyed 752 people aged 24 to 27. Now note that this survey does not explicitly describe postgraduate study. Beginning with the sprinters who made up 35% of the sample in 2016, 80% had at least one internship during their undergraduate study, 64% were confident in their major when starting undergrad, 43% of them had less than $10,000 in student loan debt, and 97% of the sprinters were employed in their field of study. Comparatively, wanderers, which made up 32% of the survey, only 50% of said wanderers were confident in their major when beginning, 47% of them had an internship, and only 20% of the wanderers were employed in their undergraduate field of study. Now for the stragglers that made up 33% of the surveyed group, most of the stragglers took time off from college or went part-time with 99% of them not having a college degree by their mid-20s. One way the author Salingo suggests improving these statistics is to reduce the sentiment that everyone needs to go to college, as well as emphasizing the benefits of community college. Switching to another article from USA Today regarding a study conducted by the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation found that between 2010 and 2013, 45% of business school graduates opted to start their own companies directly after graduating. This resulted in several pros like learning fast and access to university resources, along with some cons like financing, no stable paychecks, and loneliness. A NACE article outlining the observations made in the 2016 State of the Millennial Hiring Report found that graduates who had at least three internships were more likely to land full-time employment and 81% of students who had an internship found that it helped them shift their career aspirations to a better direction from their perspective. Now, this is very interesting because it highlights the importance of internships in the sense that it may not be your dream job, but rather it shows you what aspects of full-time employment in your field of study you do and don't prefer. Lastly, looking at the study titled Graduate Enrollment and Degrees 2006 to 2016 by Hironao Okahana and Enyu Zhao, we can see that in the fall of 2016, about 1.8 million students were enrolled in postgraduate study programs, either a graduate certificate, master's, or doctoral programs. As a comparison, in 2017, there were about 19.8 million students enrolled in post-secondary education in general. If you are interested in reading more about these stats, further, you can find them in the description below. Another great quote I heard is, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And this can go for pretty much anything. So I found this very useful when I was applying to jobs and internships. I had, you know, a document or an Excel sheet or Google spreadsheet of like which, which places I applied to, those individual portals, maybe people from my LinkedIn that worked at those companies that I could potentially reach out to, how far I was along in the process, you know, when I applied, all of things like that. And that just sort of helped me manage my expectations as well as manage all the, you know, if there was upcoming deadlines, if I had to do certain coding tests or if I had a phone interview at a certain time, doing all that definitely helped organize it in my head. Additionally, this is great for money. So if you are a graduating student like me, I'm gonna assume that money might be a little bit tight. So you gotta measure your money so that you can manage it. So measuring it in that case would be setting up a budget, seeing how much you spend on groceries, on insurance, on car payments, on Netflix, on video games per month. You have student loans like myself, how you can start paying down that terrifying number. I know in the current times, looking for a job as a newly graduated uh, student or even former student, I guess, can be particularly daunting, not very reassuring. 
but it's always helpful to keep a positive mindset in situations like this. I know I'm getting a little motivational, Michael, but you know, in, in the dark times, it's always important to be the light. When bad things happen, I know you won't believe they are a joke, but sometimes life is scary and dark. That is why we must find the light. Ah, found it. So just keep swinging at opportunities, keep trying. Everyone gets rejected. I've been rejected a bunch of times, but fortunately worked out for me. And I really, really hope it works out for you, whatever your field may be, whatever opportunity you choose to go down. I believe in all of you and your capabilities. Again, my name is Michael. I make college advice, tech videos, and computer science videos. If you are interested in any of those topics, consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so you know when I upload, hitting the like button to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you have any suggestions for videos, comment them down below. If you tuned into my last video about potential computer science careers, uh, you'll notice I got my cast off. It's nice, it feels good. I just have a little, I have a lightning bolt scar. I don't wanna show it in case anyone's grossed out by that, but you no, know, we've, we've, we've got the motion now, almost back to normal. Uh, and actually next week I move to Seattle to start working full time. Stay tuned for that if you are interested in sort of that process and you know how I got there and maybe what living in Seattle is like. So consider checking out future videos of mine. I also plan on doing some computer science builds, some, you know, I built this, doing this, you know, if you're not familiar with Michael Reeves or Trend Black, they do they do things like that now. So uh, I, I might do some videos like that because I think it looks pretty fun. It's been great. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And tune in next time for when I build a castle out of LaCroix cans. Bye-bye.